So there's many stories about athletes from Quebec, and I can safely say, unless there's something came up in the last 100 years plus, he's the greatest athlete ever to come from Sillery, Quebec. Uh, a tremendous goal scorer, a shark on the ice. Anytime he had a chance to put the puck in the net, he did it. He uh, broke every conceivable record that was not established or was established and gave relevance to uh, at least four uh, pro hockey leagues when he played. Three times Stanley Cup champion, uh, the class of the league, again, the top 100 player of all time. I've given top 40. Uh, there's not much tape in the sky. If there was, we'd be amazed how good it was and what he did. So today we have to be talking about the excellence of execution, Joe Malone. Now, Phantom Joe was born Maurice Joseph Malone on February 28, 1890 in Sillery, uh, Quebec. He played in the NHA and the NHL for the Quebec Bulldogs, Montreal Canadiens, and Hamilton Tigers from 1910 to 24. Now, a very, very gentlemanly player and probably the best sniper uh, ever. He led the league in goals and points in 1918 and 1920, and he's the only player in the history of the NHL to score seven goals in a single game, accomplishing the defeat in 1920. He was eventually elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1950. Now, he broke in at the age of 19 for the Quebec Bulldogs of the Eastern Canada uh, Hockey Association. I played with the Quebec Crescents of the QHA in 08. But in that first season with uh, in Quebec, he had 8 goals in 12 games. Now, uh, two, uh, 1909-10, he played with the Quebec and the Waterloo Colts in the OPHL. Now, what was kind of ironic about uh, that season, uh, when the NHA was formed, Quebec was for some reason left out of the loop, so he decided to play for Waterloo in the OP, OPHL. Now, when he rejoined Quebec in 1911, he was named team captain and served for the Bulldogs seven NHA seasons. Now, the big line he played on was with the great Eddie Open and Jack Marks, and he led to the Bulldogs to back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in 1912 and 1913. Rampaging for a career, career best nine goals in a cup match against Sydney, while recording a remarkable scoring total of 43 goals in 20 games in 1913. Now his brother Jeff Malone also played for Quebec in 1913 when they won the cup. In 1917, Joe scored uh, 41 goals in 19 games, finishing tied for the scoring league with Frank Neighbor of the Senators. Now Malone was in a scoring league until the final game of the season when he played uh, Neighbor and the Senators. Ottawa double-shifted two players to cover Malone the entire game, while Neighbor was able to score five goals to finish tied. Now, when the NHL was founded in 1917, Quebec did not operate a team its first season, and the team's players were dispersed amongst the other squads. Malone was claimed by the Habs and playing on what was one of the most powerful forward lines in history. With the great Newsy Lone and Didier Pitt, Malone shifted the left wing to accommodate the great Lalonde and was the NHL's first scoring leader with 44 goals in 20 games, a record total that would stand as the NHL's single season goal scoring mark until 1945 and a record per game average that stands to this day. If such an average was sustained over today's 82 game schedule, it would result in 180 goals, nearly double Wayne Gretzky's record of 92. Now Malone scored at least one goal and a total of 35 goals in his first 14 NHL games to set the record for the longest goal scoring streak to begin an NHL campaign and career. Now this streak still stands as the second longest goal streak uh, in NHL history. Now the following season Malone suffered an injured arm and missed most of the campaign, although he scored five goals in five games in the league final series against the Senators. The lingering injury held him out of the ill-fated cup finals against the Seattle Metropolitans, which was cancelled after five games due to the Spanish flu pandemic. Now Quebec revived his franchise in 1919 and Malone rejoined his original club, once more leading the league in scoring with 39 goals and setting a single game goal scoring mark which still stands of 7 against Toronto on January 31st, 1920. However, the Quebec team was very weak on the ice and his goalie had the poorest goals against average the NHL would ever see at 7.13. That season they ended up with a terrible 4-20 record. Now the team left Quebec and was relocated to Hamilton for the 21 season. 
Despite losing the four first four games of the season, as well as the franchise continued poor performance hurting his, his stats, Malone still finished fourth in league scoring with 28 goals. He finished fourth in scoring the following campaign as well. Now, after trading Milan, the tra- Canadians got him back in 1923, but he scored only a single goal that season while generally playing as a substitute. He skated nine games without scoring the next season, playing his last game on January 23rd against his former mates in Hamilton before retiring. The Canadians did not include his name in the Cup in 24 because he did not play in the playoffs. However, under NHL rules, he is credited as winning his third Stanley Cup that season. Now, Malone finished his career with 343 goals and 32 assists over 15 professional seasons. Now, back then, uh, it were very chintzy with assists, not like now where you can get upwards of two on a, on a key goal. Now, he scored the third most career game goals of any player in Major Hockey's first half century behind New Zealand alone, of course, his line mate, and Nell Stewart. His 179 goals in the NHA were the most in league's history. Now, Malone was elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1950 and is also a member of the Canada Sports Hall of Fame. In uh, 98, he was ranked number 39 on the Hockey News list of the 100 greatest hockey players. The list was announced 74 years after his last game and 91 years after his first game, making him the earliest player on the list. Uh, he is a second cousin of Sarsfield and Foster Malone, who also played briefly in the NHA, and his nephew Cliff Malone briefly played the NHL as well. Unfortunately, Malone died of a heart attack on May 15th, 1969, in Montreal. So, l- ladies and gentlemen, what a what a terrific uh, career! Uh, overall, probably some of the stats we'll never see again. But just uh, kind of seasons with the Bulldogs, ladies and gentlemen, from 1909 to 1917. Just to recap here, and this was always less than 20 games. 8, 5, 9, 21, uh, 43, 24, 16, 25, and 41 uh, goals in the regular season. When he hit Montreal in 1918, he had 44 goals and 4 assists. You were seeing uh, assists were given more often in this uh, parlay. When he came back to the Bulldogs in 1920 again, 39 goals, 21 and 22, uh, uh, totals of 28 and 24 goals, and again 23. That was the year uh, as a substitute and wrapped it up in 24. Again, 123 NHL, NHL games, 179 goals, 27 assists, 206 points, NHL totals, uh, 126 games, 143 goals, 32 assists for 175 points, uh, 8 points in the playoffs, and Stanley Cup totals that's been chronic- chronicled, uh, three, uh, 3 games, 14 goals, again, 5 goals in the Stanley Cup in 1912, and 9 in 1913. Now, just to recap, elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame 1950, NHL scoring leader 18 and 20, Stanley Cup champion 12-13 with Quebec, 24 in Montreal, uh, most goals in one game seven, January 30 31st 1920, Quebec at Toronto, Quebec 10 Toronto six, most games played with five goals or more five, highest goals per game average one season 2.20 with Montreal 1918, fastest player in NHL history score 100 goals at 62. Most consecutive three or more goal games, three, done twice, 17-18, and again later in that season, tied with Mike Bossy in his uh, outstanding 81 campaign. And again, longest consecutive goal scoring streak from the start of an NHL career, 14 games. So, not the biggest guy, uh, 5'10", 150 pounds. It was uh, not uncommon for hockey players or athletes back then to be underweight because uh, for obvious reasons. It was a uh, different uh, different diets and different, uh, what do you call it, training uh, as well. But in his career, again, playing with Quebec, Waterloo, Montreal, and Hamilton, and as well with um, the Quebec Crescents, we, we don't want to forget that. My God, what a what a legacy, ladies and gentlemen. What a legacy. So if you like what we're doing with a vintage uh, NHL podcast, uh, please let us know with a like, comment, subscribe. Please read up about, uh, about Joe Malone because uh, Stan Fischler, Brian McFarlane, uh, Dick Irvin, uh, a lot of chroniclers, I think even Frank DeFord has written stories. There is a book about Joe Malone someplace, but I don't know if it's still being published. I read that as a kid because every dictionary on hockey 
or a compilation starts with Joe Malone because it really all starts with him because literally he was the Babe Ruth before he was Babe Ruth. Uh, and the popularity of Joe Malone still uh, today. Every time I see a Quebec Nordique jersey, I said to myself, maybe for one game you should wear the old Quebec Bulldogs jersey. And I think one day the Quebec Bulldogs will be back in the NHL, and that's a hint. If the Quebec franchise ever comes back, I'd like to see you be named Bulldogs. Uh, or the Quebec Malones or something. Can you imagine the Quebec Bulldogs jersey in 2025? You know, with the, the Malone the Malone number on the patch on the side? I pay to see that. Thanks for listening. Bye.